Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to two-way ANCOVA. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. A two-way ANCOVA is a two-way analysis of covariance, which means we have two independent variables and at least one covariate in the model. So we're looking at the difference between adjusted means in two or more unrelated groups across two independent variables. So if you look at this and compare it to two-way ANOVA, in two-way ANOVA, we're looking at just the difference between means in two or more unrelated groups across two independent variables. However, in two-way ANCOVA, we're including at least one covariate so we're looking at the difference between adjusted means. So this gives us three null hypotheses for a two-way ANCOVA. The adjusted means of the first factor are equal. The adjusted means of the second factor are equal. And there is no interaction between the factors. If one or both of the independent variables has three or more levels, you also need to conduct a post hoc test after a two-way ANCOVA so that you can determine where the differences are among those levels. So to illustrate with an example, let's assume that we have a group of participants and we want to expose the participants to a treatment. Let's say we have in this one independent variable treatment three levels or groups, cognitive behavior therapy, reality therapy, and existential therapy. And let's also say that we want to determine if gender has an impact on our dependent variable. So we'll be looking at another independent variable, gender, and two levels, male and female. And let's say the dependent variable is depression. So we have an instrument that measures depression levels. We administer that at the end of the study. That's our dependent variable. That would be a two-way ANOVA. To get to a two-way ANCOVA, we would need to include a covariate. And a fairly common way of using ANCOVA would be to administer a pretest. We take that same depression inventory, that same instrument designed to measure depression levels, and administer it to every participant before the treatment. That pretest score functions as a covariate. So we're controlling for the pretest score by treating that variable as a covariate. So what we're thinking here is that the pretest explains variance in the post-test. So it's not that the pretest has an effect on the post-test. It's not causing the post-test score, but it's related to the post-test score. If someone has a high depression score on the pretest, we would expect a higher depression score on the post-test. And similarly, if they had a low depression score coming on the pretest, we would expect a lower depression score on the post-test. So the pretest and post-test scores are related, and the pretest score explains, potentially, a good deal of the variance in the post-test. So we want to control for that covariate, for that pretest score. We want to see the effects of the independent variables, gender and treatment while controlling for the effect of the pretest score. So we want that pretest score to be partialed out. That pretest would be our covariate in a two-way ANCOVA. So let's take a look at the elements of two-way ANCOVA. So as I mentioned before, we have two independent variables, and each independent variable has two or more levels. This is a between 
subjects design. An example I'm using with CBT, reality, and existential therapy, each participant belongs to only one of those levels. And the same construct with the other independent variable, with gender. Each participant would belong to either the male level or the female level of the independent variable gender. A two-way ANCOVA includes one dependent variable, that's our outcome variable. It must be measured at the interval or ratio level of measurements. And these two levels of measurements are fairly similar. We refer to both of them as the continuous level of measurement. In a ratio level of measurement, the distance between the observations is meaningful and there is a true zero, like the Kelvin temperature scale. Zero on the Kelvin temperature scale represents an absence of heat. The interval is really the same thing except there's no true zero. It does not have a true zero, like the Fahrenheit scale. Fahrenheit scale has a zero, but it doesn't represent an absence of the construct it's measuring. It doesn't represent an absence of heat. So one dependent variable in a two-way ANCOVA at the continuous level of measurement. Also, we would include one or more covariates. In this example, I'm using with the depression inventory, the pretest would be the covariate. Just like the dependent variable, a covariate must be measured at the continuous level of measurement, interval or ratio. Now taking a look at the assumptions for two-way ANCOVA, our data need to meet certain assumptions in order to perform inferential statistics. In the case of two-way ANCOVA, we have a few assumptions here. The first is we need independence of observations. So all of these scores on the dependent variable are independent of one another. We also have to meet the assumption of normality. The residuals must be normally distributed on the dependent variable for each combination of levels of the independent variables. So we think about the example I've been using where you have gender with two levels and treatment with three levels. Two times three is six. So you'd have six combinations. So you'd be testing to see if you have a normal distribution across all six of those combinations. We test for normality in a few different ways. One way is the Shapiro-Wilk test, and that returns a p-value, a probability value. If that value is less than 0.05, that leads us to believe that we're working with a non-normal distribution. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, that would indicate we do have a normal distribution. However, we also want to look at other information like the skewness and kurtosis, and we also want to look at the histograms for each of the combinations. Another assumption is the assumption of homogeneity of variances. And just as is the case with normality, we need to have homogeneity of variances for each combination of the levels of the independent variables. Oftentimes we use the Levine's test to test for homogeneity of variances. If we have a p-value on the Levine's test of less than 0.05, we would assume that we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances, and a p-value of greater than 0.05, we would assume we have met the assumption of homogeneity of variances. Another assumption for two-way ANCOVA is that there is a linear relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable. And the last assumption is the assumption of homogeneity of regression slopes. And what this means is we do not have an interaction between the covariate and the independent variables. So as you can see here, not every covariate would qualify to be used in an ANCOVA. The covariate would have to have a linear relationship with the dependent variable and no interaction with the independent variables. So when conducting a two-way ANCOVA, just as is the case with a two-way ANOVA, you're going to have a main effect of each of the independent variables, in this case gender and treatment, 
and an interaction effect, gender times treatment, while controlling for a covariate, also known as partialing out a covariate. I hope you found this video on an introduction to 2A ANCOVA to be helpful. Thanks for watching.